Council Chambers. The City Council of the City of Poplar Bluff, Missouri to be held on Tuesday, February 18th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers at 301 South 5th Street will now come to order. So please rise for the invocation by Pastor Curtis Hunter of the New Covenant Fellowship Church and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance by the Boy Scout Troop 166. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We thank you for the growth that this great city of Poplar Bluff has seen in these recent years. Lord, we come to you humbly tonight. Lord, I ask for unity throughout this meeting. I ask for wisdom and guidance for all those involved. Lord, we pray that we will come together to make sound decisions that will continue to lead to positive growth in our community in the city of Poplar Bluff. And we give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Troop 166, please. First of all, before they start, let's give them a warm welcome. I appreciate young people. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for allowing us to do this. You're welcome. It's always a wonderful sight to see young people involved. Yes. And thanks to the scout leaders. Thank you for doing what you do. Yes. Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilwoman Parson. Here. Councilman DeGarris. Here. Councilwoman Horton. Here. Councilman Cornman. Here. Councilman Black. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Davis. Mayor Smith. Here. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Clerk Young. Disclosure of interest. Any member of the city council may disclose any possible conflict of interest dealing with either any item on the printed agenda or with any matter discussed at a previous meeting. Hearing none, citizens input. Each person in the audience may take this opportunity to address the city council on any matter which is not on the printed agenda. We have Mr. Jim Chrisman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, city council members, city officials. What I want to talk about tonight is not the financing of the real estate that you're proposing to buy out there, but rather the value of it. You're aware that various taxing authorities will lose about $1,800 a month or a year when this property is removed from the tax rolls. This is school assistance, the college funding, health taxes, road taxes, general revenue. Even the city of Poplar Bluff will be losing revenue because of the city taking this off of the tax rolls. And think of what the tax consequences would be in the future as property would be built on out there. The second question is where did the value of the property at $1,005,000 come from? It's a five-year-old appraisal, but it is not an appraisal of the property that you're buying. It was an appraisal to buy the road from the bank at the time. And it has been extrapolated to cover the entire piece of the property. I don't believe that that is uh, an appropriate extrapolation it includes 25,000 or 25 acres of frog fund. And you're spending over a million dollars that you don't have any documentation as to what the value is that you're buying. I looked at an appraisal that you're using and one of the eight, per, eight uh, particular pieces of property jumped out at me. It was wrongly appraised either by the bank appraiser or the county assessor. The appraiser had that frog pond area 
at $3,434,600. And the county had it on their appraisal at $1,600. That's $3.5 million versus $1,600. That's a lot of difference in the value of a piece of property. The county is saying it's not near worth what they are. Big red flag. Other differences on the various appraisals were all also noted in that. The other question, could not the police station be built on property we all own and save a cool million dollars? You know, is, there's nothing that says we have to get rid of every dollar in the capital improvement fund that we have. Next is the wish of the people. A vote of the citizens ought to be incorporated in a decision like this. Or do the citizens no longer matter? This has all the earmarks of the cable sale that happened about a half a dozen years ago. And we know that there were a lot of mistakes made there. Just the hurry up action causes mistakes to be made. Again, I caution you that you're putting the internet use tax vote at risk. Ron Black made a good point at the last meeting, noting that they were separate issues. But I see from, from what I talk to people that the voters are still making that connection. My vote will be to vote for the internet use tax. I, I think it is needed and I, I want to support that. But I'm not sure that, that everybody will come to that same conclusion. Finally, assuming that you ran this through tonight and it's closed for the telling the uh, council is seated in April, could this be reversed? Could the property then be sold? Would this be a wise decision? This decision, if reversed in April, we should have the resignation of anybody that has supported this project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Christmas. Mr. Michael Barrett. Please state your name and address, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for letting me address you in council. I know you guys have never seen me. My name is Michael Barrett. I live at 1415 North 5th Street. And I know that you guys are like I am. Uh, you love Poplar Bluff. Uh, my wife and I moved here almost seven years ago the first time. I was a director at uh, Three Rivers College the first time for about three years. I took a dean's job in Oklahoma, the biggest mistake I ever made in my life, leaving here and going to Oklahoma. And uh, all the time I was there, then I found out that I needed to be back in education. So long story short, my wife and I are back here. I teach for Poplar Bluff High School now. I teach your children, and I love Poplar Bluff. I have a problem, and I don't know what to do about it. I come here tonight because I want to seek help. I want to uh, ask what's going on. I mean, I don't know. Now, I gave you my address, North 5th Street. I sure, I'm sure all of you know that part of town. Uh, my neighbor, the mayor, I just found out, is, is indeed one of my, mayor, my, my neighbors in that area. When my wife and I moved home, we saw our home that was there, beautiful little place. Our neighborhood looked so pretty. Homes across the road and beside us that were all built at the same time. The price was right. We jumped in. We thought we got a great, a great deal on it. We were misled by our realtors, what it was, because nobody told us that there was such a crime issue in our area. And now, I don't say that just because I don't know. I've lived there now for nearly two years this time. I still love Poplar Bluff. I have never in my life felt like I was any more insecure than I am right now. I'm a grown 61 year old man that had never been afraid of anybody or anything. And I have never owned a security system in my life until about a year and a half ago, whenever my wife was scared to stay in our home by herself. I think that's a horrible thing. And the reason why that that is the case is that we found out, I mean, we have drugs in our neighborhood. We have vagrants in our neighborhood. We have people walking the streets fighting with each other in our neighborhood. Me and my middle son went out one night in my front yard and I see a car pull up to North 5th Street and just roll the window down and shoot right at the stop sign, less than a block from my home. 
I have called the city police, and, and I think our city police does a wonderful job. Please don't get me wrong. I think our police do an amazing job. I feel like we're undermanned. I really do. I can, in what time I'm there at my home, maybe I see a police car come by if I hear that something's happened in the area. On a normal basis that I might say that I see normal, normal patrols come by once a week, every other week, and I'm not saying that our police is doing anything wrong. I'm saying there's not enough of them. I'm saying, you know, now I hear a lot about the money that's going to be spent on City Hall, what have you. I don't know nothing about that. I'm not here to talk to you about anything like that. I am sure that all of you have already weighed everything and you're already aware. But let me beg you, if any of that money is going to come away from the police department and away from putting their presence in my neighborhood that might make me feel like that my grandchildren are safe, then please don't do it. Now I want to tell you, like I say, I just want to give you a few things. I mean, I've followed cars to my home because I know of a home in the area that I feel like drugs are being sold out of. I follow cars all the time from Illinois, Indiana, Tennessee, Texas, and they'll be going about five miles an hour down Davis. They'll turn on fifth. They go down to my neighbor's home. They pull up, honk the horn, pop the trunk, leave the motor running, never get out. Somebody runs out of the house, gets something out of the trunk that they take off like they've been scalded. What's going on here? I mean, I don't know. But it sure seems like to me that something is kind of awry. And then I hear of these shootings. I see shootings. Like I say, never in my life have I ever had to call the police so much, at least once a month. I even went to the point where one time I went up to the police station and I apologized to the officer in duty there. I said, I don't want to be a problem. I just want to feel like I'm being protected. I mean, I hope you get where I'm coming from. I know you guys are overwhelmed. I'm just seeking some help. I'm just seeking somebody that can say, hey, there's a problem in this area and we're gonna to try to take care of it. There's a problem down there for one thing that my wife and I can't hardly handle. We spend at least one day a month that we walk down Davis, we walk down Fifth, and we pick up a bag or two full of trash. I mean, if you hadn't been over in that area, We've got vagrants that walk up and down the street. They're on their way to the gas station down there. Then they'll go down there and they're getting a, bl a brown paper sack. And what might it have, it have in it? They're a lot happier on their walk back. Plus, they're <laughs> throwing stuff in the ditches. Why can't we stop that kind of stuff? And then we got people in that area that their mode of transportation is their piece of riding lawnmowers. And they're doing the same thing. They're driving from off down there in the woods, the Rotary Park, where, I mean, are they camped there? I suspect they are. They're driving from there up to the same gas station. They're buying their things in their brown paper bags, and then they can't hardly drive straight on the way back, even a, mo a, a lawn mower. Why can't we stop that kind of stuff? The thing that really bothers me is whenever I walk out of my garage, I pop my garage door open. I'm working on my pickup, changing oil in my truck. And then I got two people walking by and they're fighting each other. And I'm looking at them like, what is this? And then I, you know, I know I said, I've got to call the police on this. And then they turn around, they're cussing each other and then they're cussing me to the point to where I just reach over in my toolbox and grab a hammer and I just say, you better walk on, just go on. What am I going to do? This is in my home that I own. That is a beautiful little home that I've put a lot of money in. I've even put a brand new vinyl privacy fence around it because I'm trying my best to secure my little part of the world so my wife and my grandchildren can feel secure. Now, I'm not telling you about a place over in Iraq. This is Poplar Bluff, Missouri that I love. My wife and I came back here because we love this area. I grew up around Jonesboro, Arkansas. I taught at Jonesboro High School for 17 and a half years. I didn't choose to go back to Jonesboro, Arkansas. 
we chose to come back here because I've still got kids in Jonesboro and I've got kids up in St. Louis. We're right in the middle. But I need some help. I don't know what to do. I'm not complaining. I just want to open your eyes. There's a lot of things going on in Poplar Bluff that I hope can be stopped. I hope that we can work toward. I mean, we've got homes in that area down there that need to be dozed over. We got homes in that area that are so trashed, it looks like to me they're a health issue. And now, I mean, I'm not trying to say anything about the area. I'm saying that Poplar Bluff is a beautiful town and it could be so such a wonderful little town if we just all work to clean stuff up. Help me. My wife and I are picking up trash. I'm calling the police every time I see anything awry, but it's not working. And I guess that's all I got, all I got to say. I, I just, I don't know what to do. I told my wife last time, that, you know, I mean, I don't know the times that I'm sitting in my own living room or I'm sitting out on my deck whenever I can hear what sounds like the OK Corral, not a block away. And every police officer that I've ever spoke to, they said, oh, yes, by all means, always give us a call. And I always do. Well, what's going to happen whenever they're so far away from me? And I don't blame them. I really don't. I think they're undermanned. I think we need more of a presence in my neighborhood because it's worth saving. Just like entire Poplar Bluff is worth saving. And I thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. Barry, for, for coming before us. I can relate to what you're saying. I do understand, and uh, I've talked to the chief of police, and, and he has agreed to meet with us. And, and uh, <coughs> this is a problem that you can't solve overnight, uh, and I do understand that. And just bear with us, and we will work diligently to, to get this taken care of. I live in that same area, and I do know and understand what you're saying. Thank you again for your presence, and we will stay in touch with you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Moving on to the, the consent agenda. The items on the consent agenda are approved by a single action of the city council. If any council member would like to have an item removed from the consent agenda and considered separately, he or she may request to do so. Make a motion for approval of consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item A, workshop items for discussion. Item A, the City Council will, will discuss a petition for annexation from SCORE LLC of 900 North, 900 North, 900 North Street. Whoa. The property approximately 9.64 acres, more or less, is located south of Canal Boulevard east of Highway 67 bypass, north of Roxy Road, and the immediately west of Woodland Hills subdivision. Mr. Winters. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As he stated, the uh, property uh, being considered for annexation is currently owned by SCORE LLC, um, and they're requesting a little over nine and a half acres that um, is to the, uh, to the west of Woodland Hills subdivision, and and uh, kind of behind the New Covenant Fellowship Church and behind their pond they have back there in the back. Um, as we go through this process, the, the primary motivation behind this request is um, AmeriCare is actually considering building a senior care facility on this parcel of property. Uh, you'll be hearing more about that as, as uh, that comes before planning and zoning next week and will eventually um, be before you in a couple of weeks. And this original request is for the annexation of that property as part of that project. Um, if you have any questions for regarding that, that project, you'll be hearing about there is a representative from AmeriCare here that uh, 
has some some uh, early site plans done if you have if you have any interest in that this evening but uh, this primarily is for the annexation request so okay I would like to hear from the representative for just sure. a minute or two sure Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Neil Slattery. I'm a staff engineer for AmeriCare Senior Living. Uh, address uh, 3300 Bluff Creek Drive, Columbia, Missouri. Uh, first thing to say is AmeriCare Senior Living is a Sykeston company. Microphone. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, I'll just repeat that last statement. AmeriCare Senior Living is a, a Sykeston company. Uh, they built a facility here in town almost 35 years ago over on Maud Street, a small assisted living uh, facility. What we're proposing here is, uh, uh, it, and I have an exhibit that I can answer any further questions, but uh, the church is located here just south of the canal. Proposed projects here at the southwest, uh, southeast corner, just south of the lake. It is uh, going to be a 30 unit assisted living facility along with some independent uh, cottages. The closest one that I could reference you to is uh, Cape Town in uh, Cape Dorado, Missouri. It's just a little over an hour away. Um, the reason for this is, as mentioned, the original assisted living, uh, River Mist assisted living over on Maud Street, the product has kind of has, has served its time. And there, you know, a lot of t uh, these type of products, they're always trying to upgrade, uh, increase the level of services. and. Uh, that's the that's the purpose of upgrading this facility they'll convert the old facility more to have more uh, memory care beds the over the size of this project besides the, uh, the areas uh, it's a 30 unit assisted living facility and 17 cottage units the seven uh, total of nine buildings on the project and um, they're a mix of duplex triplex buildings with a with a clubhouse and uh, oh. The staffing on this type of project is typically about uh, 12 to 15 employees. During the day shift at six or seven, they have a, a licensed administrator, they have a director of nursing, they have an activity specialist, and then all the general staff. The, the main building, it's almost 27,000 square feet. All these buildings, I'll flip a picture real quick. I know that's tough, but all these buildings are single story. They're about 90 something, over 90% brick. Um, we do these projects, America is in five states right now, and I've been doing their projects for about 20 years. Uh, from uh, downtown Memphis to central Kansas to central Illinois. Most of them are here in Missouri. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm here to answer any more specifics. But the one reason to come through the annexation process is all the utilities are uh, close by, but in order to connect to city utilities, we have to go through the annexation and rezoning process to make right. this project, move this project forward. Yeah. So, we have any questions from the council? Uh, I think we're okay with it. Thank you, sir. Well, we need a mo motion to uh, move this to a public hearing on uh, March 2nd. We're calling for a resolution. We're calling for a public hearing at a later date. Okay. Calling for a re resolution. Okay. So, so moved. Or, or second. <laughs> Record what you want to do there. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item B. The City Council will consider a recommendation for financing of the Shelby Road property acquisition. <clears throat> Mr. Massingham. Yes, Mr. Mayor, as Council requested, uh, we looked into doing some uh, local financing for the Shelby Road property. Uh, we sent out requests for proposals to uh, all the banks in town. We received uh, two proposals, one from uh, Commerce Bank here in Poplar Bluff, uh, and then one from First Midwest Bank. Uh, Commerce Bank interest rate was 2.16%. Uh, First Midwest Bank was 365 uh, in my manager's report, I had initially recommended a Commerce Bank because of the low interest rate, but they do have a 
prepayment or early payment uh, penalty of 3% the first year, 2% the second year, and 1% for each year thereafter. Uh, as you all know, we're working on uh, certificates of participation, which would uh, eventually pay for the property and for the construction of the police department. So once those are done, we would uh, most likely pay off this loan. So it would be a short-term loan, uh, which means we could end up actually paying a $30,000 penalty this year if we were to do the COPs and pay off the loan. So with First Midwest Bank, there's no prepayment penalty. And uh, I'm just changing my recommendation that we use First Midwest Bank. voting session with the recommendation of the city manager. Second. Did we have a second? Yes, second. Okay. Uh, we have further discussion. Okay. Mr. Durbin. My name is Robert Durbin. I live 1609 North 13th Street here in Poplar Bluff. Getting up speaking is not my choice. And this is the hardest thing I've ever done. Mr. Mayor, council members, city manager, I appreciate the chance to speak. I know this has uh, been beat to death, and I'm going to take one last shot at it. I would like to change your minds. Tough job to do. People's minds are made up. This thing has divided the town, and I don't understand why. I feel like I've got an open mind. I went around town. This started for me in September. It come to my attention about the uh, property acquisition out on Shelby Road. And the firm that was uh, doing the consulting on it, uh, it come to my attention that they were going to make over six hundred thousand dollars off of this deal according to the recommendation they made well i come to the council then and i spoke about the fact that six hundred thousand dollars is leaving poplar bluff and it's not coming back I, I i spoke then that the recommendations they were making did not represent poplar bluff and that any member of the public could give you their true cents worth, save $600,000, and it doesn't have to do with Shelby Road. I know that people have voted for this for the longest time, and I'm here one last time to try to change your mind. First time I ever spoke directly to the chief was tonight, and any remarks I make tonight I have no personal grievance with anyone. The only reason why I'm here is that I personally and everyone I know do not feel like they're being represented by the council or by the city government. I have done my, I've went out of my way to ask everyone I have come in contact with if they support the Shelby Road purchase and not one single person that I have had contact with since September would go along with buying the Shelby Road project. No one has ever said anything bad about the chief, and I am not going to be the one. I, I, I would never. I, I have 
the most up, utmost respect for the man. Uh, I spoke to him a few minutes ago. I told him uh, I knew whenever he got the job. Knew of him. Knew the rumors and the innuendo this town's ate up with it. Uh, most, the reputation that Popper Bluff has is buddy buddy deals, backdoor deals, whatever, little Chicago. I, I, that's sad. That's sad. But my impression of the chief at the time, whenever he got the chief's job, was that he would have took the job for nothing. The man wanted the job. He, he does a great job at it. And I really think, as I told him just a few minutes ago, that if we took this project away from him, if we took a building away from him and told him he had to do his job out of a patrol car, I think the man would still do the job, in my opinion. That's nothing I would ever do to the man or anybody else. I think we ought to have the best law enforcement, the, the best equipment to handle the job, but I have to disagree about where. And I will make my best effort to persuade you that this million and fifty dollars that if I misspoke, if I misrepresent any item, it's because that it's not been available to me or the public that for whatever reason this came to be, the property is not worth four point five million dollars. I'm not an assessor, I'm not an appraiser, I don't have business background. I grew up just across the creek from there. I caught my first fish out of Pike Creek right there in that curve. I have a lot of personal connection to that particular area, but I still don't value it at $4.5 million. I wouldn't even value it at a million dollars. What I don't understand is how council members that are supposed to represent the citizens of Poplar Bluff are making votes and making decisions that don't reflect the citizens of Poplar Bluff. The city government, council, and it seems so out of touch with the citizens of Poplar Bluff that we're supposed to represent. And we're supposed to, the, uh, the last time I was here, I begged that uh, the money, the tax money that you're overseeing be spent in a wise manner. If we have $1 million surplus in the city of Poplar Bluff, then I respectfully ask that I get a refund of my amount, I have better uses for it. I cannot put it any plainer than that. The, the, the two reasons that I have been given for the Shelby Road project is that the chief wants it there and that there is a better response from that location to an active shooter situation. Presumably, we're talking about the schools. Please, dear God, don't anybody challenge me on this. I have a student in the high school, I have a student in the junior high, I have a grandson that goes to early childhood. But I can tell you right now, it does not make me feel any safer knowing that the police station would be that much closer to that situation. The location of the police station is not gonna change the outcome of that. I looked up some of this stuff I'm, I'm not, boy, this is a, the, the last thing I want to do is for anybody to challenge me on any of this. But there was a shooting in a Texas church, White Settlement, Texas. It was over with in six seconds. The FBI says the response time of city police nationwide, any city, is between five and ten minutes. Five and ten minutes. This was over with in six seconds. There were six people armed in this church. I would never, ever recommend vigilante justice. Six people at least were armed. Six people pulled their weapons in this church. The gentleman that pulled his shotgun shot two people. The second one he shot was reaching to the center of his back for a handgun that he was carrying. He was killed before he could respond. The gentleman that actually took him out was at the back of the church. And for all these people that say that armed the teachers and all that, the gentleman that actually took him out was a firearms instructor. There were six other people pulled their weapons and did nothing. The instructor followed through with what he had been training everybody to do but nobody else did. 
there was weapons pointed in different directions or whatever. Arming teachers, arming people that, no. But the position of the, the police station in relative to that, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. I recall, I'm getting old, uh, Snyder's IGA was here. It got uh, robbed one day. The, uh, the guy was running out of the store with the bank bag. If I'm wrong, somebody can correct me. I, I apologize. Uh, my understanding is that the son showed up at the same time. He'd been deer hunting. As he saw the gentleman running across the, I say gentleman, the guy that robbed the store running out with the bank bag, he recognized it as being his mother's bank bag that she <coughs> carried to the bank every day. He took his deer rifle and he shot the guy. There was no time for any police response. I would never recommend that as a solution, but it, in the best of terms, if you go from five minutes to 10 minutes, if you move the station and you get a five minute response time, the church shooting was over within six seconds. There was another one in uh, Southern Springs, Texas. Church shooting, 20 people were killed inside the church. I apologize. It was over with in 11 minutes. The guy did what he was doing, he went outside, and someone outside of the church responded to it, chased him down, there were shots fired. It was sometime later down the highway before the first police response. It doesn't matter where we put this, guys. The end of the day, we do not have a million dollars to just throw away. Let's take that million dollars, if we have it, and put it into improving the downtown area instead of giving it away to the slum scums or whatever and improve on that. Let's improve on what equipment we have for the police department. Let's do what we need to do to bring Poplar Bluff back to the Poplar Bluff that we all know and love. Come on, really? Why are we throwing money away? Please, let's all come together. And the, the Constitution, I went back through all this. I, now, I apologize. Uh, I went back and read the Constitution before I, I come up here to speak. I, you know, it starts out with the word we, we, we. We're all in this together, guys. A million dollars we're just going to throw away? $600,000 to some outside firm for stuff that we can decide for ourselves. We can make it better ourselves. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hate clocks. <laughs> guys, I really <laughs> hope that somebody changes their mind. Please. Thank you, Mr. Darwin. Well, Mr. Duckett. Please state your name and address, sir. My name is Robert Duckett. I live at uh, 2317 Pike Street here in Popper Bluff. <clears throat> city Mayor, City Council, City Government officials. I appreciate the Council allowing me to speak this evening. The saga of finding a home for the new City Hall and Police Station has been a long, ongoing search with passionate responses on both sides of the discussion. I believe we can all agree to the fact that the city needs a permanent solution to its housing issue. Also, I think we can all agree that the police department needs a home specifically de designed for its purpose. The council and citizens have heard many reasons why the land is either too much or exactly what is needed for the project, whether the land is usable or not and if the purchase price is financially responsible or not. Of course, we can't forget the talk about backdoor politics and good old boys club. But back and forth through this conversation has provided lots of information. Yet there's been one aspect that has been completely left out. Trust. The council positions are elected for three-year terms. You all know that. These elections are voted on by the constituents of each ward and the citizens of Popper Bluff for the at-large positions. Now each council member took an oath to do their best to represent those that voted them in. Your wards and the citizens of Popper Bluff have placed their trust in you to do that. 
not only, but to listen to their concerns and suggestions for the betterment of this city. The people of this great city trust you. Trust is a powerful thing. It can be used to accomplish great things. When a group can trust one another, there is no need to worry if something is being done right. It can also be lost carelessly with a word or a careless gesture. Once lost, it is very difficult to restore. Tonight, this council will have the opportunity to restore some of the trust lost over years of poor decisions and of recent events. As mentioned before, this topic has been a powerfully divisive matter for our city for many years. You, the council, you have two choices before you. One decision could restore the faith and trust in this council and create a bond with the city to unite the council and the citizens in a common purpose. The other decision could drive a deeper wedge between the council and the people of Popper Bluff, furthering the feeling of mistrust. Tonight, I appeal to your sensibilities as duly elected officials. As leaders of this community, I understand that you hope to leave a legacy of your actions on this council. Your vote tonight will determine that legacy. Consider your vote wisely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deckett. Please state your name and address, sir. Uh, Tim Funke. Uh, address is 341 Woodland Hills. I didn't come necessarily this evening for this issue, but uh, after listening, and uh, Robert, I appreciate that you don't like to speak because I don't either. However, I do feel passionately about this, and I would implore the council, given the information we have, that they might wait 60 days to make this decision. We have an election coming up. Um, Unlike Mr. Chrisman, who said he voted for the, it would vote for the internet tax, I voted for that internet tax twice. Last time I didn't. That's because of the things the council is doing. In my uh, goings, comings, and goings around town, talking to people, I find virtually no support for the Shelby project. I want the city to have a nice police station. I want the city to have a nice city hall. The Shelby Road project is not the right project. We've got an election coming up, 60 days, less than 60 days. In case anybody hadn't noticed, the second time we had that election, it failed by what, 12 votes? Last time it vote failed by 270, something like that. I was one of those 270 that voted against it. City needs that tax and I'll vote for it. When the city decides to invest in downtown, you want everybody else to invest in downtown and you're headed out west. Now I live out west, live out close to the new residential care facility. I'm excited about that. I'm trying to get a pathway over there. Anyway, um, and the police station would be a good asset for my house. However, I have a business on the south end of downtown. I invested there, I pay taxes there. I'd like to see the city add some more anchors downtown. We have the library, we have the courthouse, we have the, um, uh, just the sheriff's department, we have the Rogers Theater, we have post office. Uh, a nice city hall and police station downtown would be a great addition to that. Um, lastly, and Robert referenced everybody he talks to, last fall when this came up, the Chamber of Commerce did a survey of the members and they asked, the question I think specifically said, are you in favor of the city hall on Shelby Road? And the responses that came back was, an amazing 87%, 87% said 
they were against City Hall on Shelby Road. 13% were for it. I find some people that are for it. Most of the people I find that are for it are kind of passively, they just don't care. They're willing to concede downtown to ruin and rot, okay? They, they think that it can't be saved, and so they think that maybe Shelby Road is a good location. Uh, I think downtown can still has potential. It's not gonna be a thriving commerce center. Um, on that survey, 87%, I interpreted the question more broadly that was asked, and I think most people did, that we thought the question was, should the city proceed with Shelby Road? And we answered no, resoundingly. The council came back after that and said, okay, we're gonna put City Hall downtown. I was dismayed by that. That's kind of like when you ask your teenage child where are they going, for the evening they said I'm going to a beer party at the lake and so you tell them no I don't want you to go to the lake to and so they go to a beer party down the street well the object wasn't that you didn't want to go to the lake the object was you didn't want to go out and get plastered and the object here is that we don't want the city buying the property on Shelby Road we want to see this development downtown so I would ask that you consider giving a 60-day window to this the new council coming in, if, if in the election we elect council people who are for this project and we pass the tax, then so be it. That's the will of the people and we move on with the Shelby Road location. However, if we don't, we're going to have a new council. The downtowners, they're going to be stuck with a property and a mortgage. And I agree that that property is not going to sell you know, this is appraised at 4.3, 4.8 million something. There's not a line of people waiting to buy that property. If you don't buy that today, that property is going to be available in 60 days. And when the new council gets seated and they try to offload this property, they're not going to offload it at profit. They're not going to make, sell it for $2 million. They're either going to sit on it for a long, long time or they're going to offload it at a loss. And so, again, I would just ask that you consider giving it 60 days. Thank you. I'd like to respond, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Please. Mr. Funky, I noticed you didn't build your building downtown. There are a lot of vacant buildings down there, sir. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm talking uh, now, sir. Please. Okay. Less, huh? okay. That's not direct, that's not direct comments, please. I just, I just do. Notice that you didn't, okay? Matter of fact, sir. Uh, and the, the survey was answered by several who weren't even city citizens. So I don't know how much validity it has. I don't know how my own daughter who lives in Tennessee had an opportunity to, to respond. I don't know if she did or not in all honesty, but she could have, it was there. Uh, and um, you do understand, sir, what it is appraised for and what we're buying is two totally different figures. Several times tonight that the appraisal figure has been used. It has been questioned. But that is a far price from what we are buying. Would you clarify, Mr. Manager, the appraisal and the price? Yes, the appraisal was, uh, I think, one of them was 4.3 million. Uh, the sale price is one million fifty dollars. And when you all asked me to look into purchasing this property, and I brought it back to you with that price and the appraise, appraisals that had been done, I did make the comment that night that uh, you know here's the appraisal value, here's the price, asking price of the property. Uh, I did make the comment that I realized property is only worth what people will pay for it, and I still go back to that. That's very true. And just because it's appraised at 4.3 million doesn't mean it's worth 0.4.3 million. But uh, but neither are we paying that appraisal. Right, we are not paying that amount. So, Mr. Crispin, Jim Crispin, 464 North Main, and I'd like to question you on the appraisal, Mark. 
the appraisal was done to purchase the road. Yes, it was. It was not done on the whole piece of property, which includes the lowlands, which really have no value, that are appraised at three and a half million dollars. So three and a half million dollars, the city assessor has that at sixteen hundred dollars. So it, the appraisal that you have is totally invalid. Any other discussion from the audience? Mr. Black said about the value of the property. I, I wasn't referring to the four point something million dollars of the property value. The the one million dollars, one million fifty dollars that the city is contemplating purchasing this property for, I personally do not feel like this property is worth it. And I do not see any worth in buying this property. If this if this bank that has been stuck with this needs to write it off, if they want to donate to the city of Poplar Bluff and write that off to clear their books. I understand that. But for us to give them a million dollars in order to fix their situation that they're in, I don't see it. I don't see any purpose behind buying this property at all for any amount of money. Thank you, sir. No other discussions from the floor? The only Mr. Mayor, the only thing I'd like to say is the gentleman mentioned something about response time of, our, of the police department. I don't think our response time of our police department's ever gone six minutes anywhere in town. Do we need more officers? Yes. Problem areas pop up and they take care of them as quick as they can. Just like they're working on the things that have happened this past week. We have a great police department and I'm proud of them, will always will be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move item B to tonight's voting session with the city manager's recommendation. Recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Item C. The City Council will consider a recommendation for accurate. <laughs> I can't even say it. Accurate architectural services for the proposed police station building. Mr. Massingham. Yes, I would just like to, uh, basically what I'd like to do tonight is just kind of update on the council uh, on the process we've been going through for the architect for the police department. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the selection process for a design team for the new police station and 911 center was conducted in accordance with qualification based selection process prescribed by the Missouri state statutes. On January 13th of this year, the city of Bluff issued an RFQ request for qualifications for design services for the new police and 911 center that was approved by the city council in December of 2019. The RFQ was publicly advertised per city procurement ordinances. The city received seven responses uh, on February 4th of this year. Those respondents included Dillian Traxel, FGM, Chiodini, Hofer Wysocki, Police Facility Design Group, and Arch Images, and Buxton Cuban Dodd. Per city council approval, per the city council approved RFQ, the firms were evaluated to see if they met the prerequisites set forth in the uh, RFQ. One firm, uh, Chiodini's, they're out of St. Louis, did not provide the required prerequisite documentation and they were disqualified. 
the remaining firms did meet the prerequisites required and were formally evaluated based upon the following. Police station expertise, firm and staff, project understanding, and the record of performance. A committee was set up, uh, and the evaluators include Chief Whiteley, Deputy Chief McLean, City Planner Matt Winters, and myself. Uh, we all took a weekend and scored those. We weren't together. We scored them individually. Uh, actually did not even talk about them. Uh, following Monday, all the numbers were put together and three, form, three of the firms scored substan substantially higher than the rest and were shortlisted for an interview. The three firms were FGM, Police Facility Design Group, and Hofer, or Hoffer Wysocki. Uh, we interviewed those firms today, started at 9.30 and finished about, uh, yeah, it was probably about two o'clock this afternoon. Uh, there was a unanimous decision made today that Police Facility Design Group is the most qualified firm for our project. All they do is police departments. They've designed over 300 police departments in several different states. Uh, they're out of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, as such, we would like to begin a fee and contract negotiation with this firm if we are unable to achieve a fair and reasonable price for the services proposed. With this firm, the city reserves the right to cancel negotiations and would move to the second highest firm, which would be FGM. Uh, pending co positive contract negotiations, we propose that the contract of the selected firm be introduced to the council in a workshop meeting on March the 2nd, so they may do a presentation and uh, allow council input and citizens input, and then hopefully pass on to the March 16th voting session uh, for contract approval. Uh, so what I would ask you tonight is uh, to consider our recommendation and we would workshop that at the March 2nd meeting and then vote on it on March 16th meeting. And that should give plenty of time for uh, citizens input and council input. And they would be able to meet the firm that's been selected. Understood this was a unanimous city uh, decision of the committee? Yes, sir. And this firm has built over 300? Over 300, 300 police stations, so yes. they specialize in police stations. Yes, that's all they do. Uh, and all three firms were very impressive because I think one firm had built a little less than 50 police stations, one had built in excess of 50 police stations and that uh, this firm was the most impressive there you know it's kind of like when you go to the doctor you don't want an orthopedic surgeon doing heart surgery on you so they know exactly what they're doing and by doing this many police stations they know where to cut cost and uh, we all felt very good about this company so. Make a motion we pass it to the voting session on uh, three, two. two. Uh, we would actually workshop it again workshop. on the second. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item 9AA Action Required Items. Bill number 8209, the city council will take action on an ordinance for the mow to own program. Motion for first reading of bill number 8209. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance creating a mow to own program for the city of Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? Councilor. Add ordinance creating a mow to own program for the city of Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Motion for adoption. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Councilman DeGarris? Yes. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilman Black? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Bill number 8209 is adopted. Item BB, Bill number 8210. The City Council will take action on an ordinance with respect to the Municipal Utilities Annual Net Metering Disclosure. Motion for first reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance approving and adopting an annual net metering report for the City of Popper Bluff Municipal Utilities Department. Motion for second reading of Bill number 8210. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance approving and adopting an annual net metering report for the City of Popper Bluff Municipal Utilities Department. Motion for adoption. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilman DeGarris? Yes. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilman Black? Yes. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Bill number 8210 is adopted. Item CC, Bill number 8211. The City Council will take action on an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement between the City of Poplar Bluff and the Department of Conservation concerning Sportsman's Park. Motion for first reading of Bill number 8211. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Poplar Bluff, Missouri, to execute an agreement between the city of Poplar Bluff and the Missouri Department of Conservation regarding maintenance of Sportsman's Park in the city of Poplar Bluff. Motion for second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Councilor. Add an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Popper Bluff to execute an agreement between the city of Popper Bluff and the Missouri Department of Conservation regarding maintenance of Sportsman's Park in the city of Popper Bluff. Motion for adoption. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilman Black? Yes. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Councilman DeGarris? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Bill number 8212 is adopted. Item EE, bill number 8213. This, whoa, whoa. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Item DD, Bill Number 8212. The City Council will take action on an ordinance with respect to the selection of, of professional consultant services for the Aviation Grant Project 20-75A-1. Motion for first reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Poplar Brook, Missouri to execute an agreement for professional services between the city of Poplar Bluff and S.H. Smith and Company for planning consultant services 
for the Papa Bluff Airport Aviation Project 20-075A-1. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Poplar Bluff, Missouri to execute an agreement for professional services between the city of Poplar Bluff and S.H. Smith & Company for planning consultant services for the Poplar Bluff Airport Aviation Project 20-075A-1. Motion to second any further discussion roll call clerk young councilman cornman yes councilman black yes councilwoman parson yes councilman de yes councilwoman horton yes mayor smith yes bill number 8212 is adopted item ee -E, bill number 8213 the city council will take action on an ordinance accepting a financing proposal for the Shelby Road land acquisition. Motion for first reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like to point out that at the time this uh, ordinance was drafted, it did include uh, the recommendation at that point in time of the city manager, uh, and therefore the ordinance as, uh, uh, as written and published and provided for here in the, in the room uh, has now changed. And so I will um, read the heading uh, of the uh, proposed ordinance uh, that has been provided to you and to the public, uh, but I will um, change the name of the uh, recommended uh, financer and I will have to uh, draft this, uh, redraft this ordinance to include that change of recommendation just, just to make it clear for everyone in the room. So noted. Thank you, sir. Bill number 8213, an ordinance accepting a proposal for financing of the Shelby Road real estate acquisition project from First Midwest Bank of Popper Bluff related to the Popper Bluff Police Department project. Mr. Crispin, the item has been moved to a voting session. Point, point of order here. As the city attorney has pointed out, this uh, information has not been provided to the council people in its final form. It wasn't provided to the public in its final form. I think it's appropriate that you postpone the consideration of this until the next meeting. Thank you. Well, I'm worried about well taken. Do you need a motion for first reading? For second, second reading. reading. Motion for second reading. Adoption of the first reading. And second. Motion for second reading. Okay. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Councilor. An ordinance accepting a proposal for financing of the Shelby Road real estate acquisition project from First Midwest Bank of Popper Bluff related to the Popper Bluff Police Department project. for adoption. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Clerk Young. Councilman Black? Yes. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Councilman DeGarris? No. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Mayor Smith. No. Bill number 8213 is adopted. Item FF, resolution number 1917. 
the city council will take action on a re resolution appointing a citizen representative and a re realty rep and a realtor representative to the residential housing advisory board. Motion to reading of resolution number one nine one seven. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Councilor. A resolution of the City of Papa Buck, Missouri making appointments to the Residential Housing Board. Motion for adoption. Second. I'll, oh, Roll call, Clerk Young. Councilwoman Parson? Yes. Councilman DeGarris? Yes. Councilwoman Horton? Yes. Councilman Cornman? Yes. Councilman Black? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Resolution no number 1917 is adopted. Item GG. The City Council of the City of Poplar Bluff will meet in a closed meeting in which they will discuss such matters which are exempted under the open me meetings law in section 16.21.1.2.3.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.